Hi, I'm Michelle Manning, and I am the Technology Integration Specialist in Smithtown Central School District on Long Island in New York. I was a classroom teacher for 26 years before becoming the Technology Integration Specialist. I'm so excited and honored to be here today and be a part of Cami Connect. I'm here today to talk about boosting accessibility and inclusion with CAMI. Using all of the tools and resources, you can CAMIFY your lessons to make sure that all students have the tools and resources that they need to be engaged and involved in the lesson and have their voices heard. It's so important that the students are engaged and involved. So thanks to CAMI, we have the tools to do that. So before I tell you how to CAMIFY your lessons, first let me tell you what CAMI means to me. The K stands for the CAMI resources and tools. CAMI has so many resources that are available that the teachers can use to kickstart their lessons to save them some time when lesson planning. You can also use the CAMI tools to provide different levels of support for your students because the students also have access to the CAMI tools so that they're engaged and participating with the lesson. The A stands for accessibility. You can use the CAMI tools and resources to create different versions of your lessons so that you are meeting the different learning styles and needs and levels of the students in your classroom. M, the M stands for modify. You can take some of the CAMI resources and modify them for your level and your lessons, or you can use your existing lessons and use the CAMI tools to modify them so that they're presented in different modalities to meet the different needs of your students. The I stands for inclusion. Whether the teacher is providing the resources and tools when assigning the lesson, or whether the students have access to those tools on their own, it's allowing the students to participate and be engaged. If they don't have their tools, they can be struggling, get frustrated, and become a reluctant learner. Now, by having this accessibility and by being involved, they'll be much more enthusiastic, engaged, and be able to express their understanding of the material and topics. So now let's talk more about how you can find some of these resources that I keep mentioning. Of course, you all have your own resources in your OneDrive, Google Drive, or from a third-party resource. But I am so excited and honored to be the one to tell you about this brand new feature that Cami will be releasing soon, the Cami Library. We all have seen some of their resources through Cami app or from the Cami's new homepage. But now Cami has created a library where you can access their hundreds of templates that are engaging, colorful, and so much fun to use. Again, saving the teacher a lot of time and kickstarting your lesson. In the Cami library, you can sort and filter by subject, grade level, or topic. These are great because you can use them as they do now, or an exit ticket, or a during class lesson. You can also take the Kami library resources and use the split and merge tool in Kami to combine them with your own resources, download them, or share them with your friends. I'm so excited and honored to be the one to tell you about this tremendous library of resources that Kami will be releasing very soon. So now let me show you how I took some of these resources from the Kami library and camified them for my classroom. So here's an example of the JotSpot template that I got from the Kami library. First, I modified it by adding a title. I posed the question, is Goldilocks guilty of breaking and entering? Then I assigned this to the students through my LMS so that all students were editing the same copy. Each student was pre-assigned a number, usually alphabetically, so the students knew exactly what box to go to to type their response. And using the Cami Collaborator icons, I can quickly see which students are participating and what their responses are if I don't remember what their number is. This could also be accessible for the students because Cami has recently added the Open Dyslexic font. So if the student needs that resource, it is available for them. From the teacher's perspective, this is a great tool to use because I can quickly gauge the whole class and the understanding of the concept. If I notice that one of the boxes is blank, I know that that student is either off topic or struggling. So I can circulate around the room to those students to see if they need a little extra support. From the student side, this is a great resource because if the student is struggling, they can see what their classmates are writing and perhaps get a little motivation or that little prompt that they need to get started so that they can also participate. 
I love this JotSpot template. And again, it could be used as a do now, as an exit ticket, or to open classroom discussion. So I would definitely bookmark this one and save it for another date because it's something that you could quickly modify and use regardless of what subject or grade level or topic you're working on. So for this example, I took the Meet the Teacher template from the Kami Library and turned it into a character trait chart so the students could explain how Helen Keller had changed throughout the story. So let me show you how I did that. So first, obviously, I wanted to cover the title. So I used the text box and typed my new title. But as you can see, you can still see through the text box. So on the toolbar menu, I selected background color and changed it to white and then simply resized it so that it covered the existing title. And of course, you can modify it with whatever font, point size, and color you want. So here's an example of the final copy. And in each of the different boxes on the graphic organizer, I labeled them with the text boxes to direct the students through the lesson. Now, some of the students may need a little more support to make this accessible. So I used Kami's comment tool. And what I did was I provided voice comments along the side, because if the students aren't sure how to respond, they're not going to be engaged and they'll just be sitting there looking at a blank screen. So the students may also be too embarrassed to raise their hands and ask a question. So the students simply have to press play and then they would get that additional support that they need to get started on the lesson. So how I did that was under the comment tool, I chose voice comment, put the dot to notify the students that there's a voice comment and you could even change the color to make sure that it stands out. Or you could even organize them by color so that they know which are voice comments or which are text comments. But now I can come over here and simply provide that extra support. So at the end of the story, how was her behavior different? What was she able to do at the end of the story that she could not do at the beginning? And then I press stop, and now there are embedded resources to make this lesson accessible. Many students have in their IEP directions read or simplified, or perhaps you have a student who needs it read to them in a different language. So now the resources are available. Down here, instead of a voice comment, I added a text comment, and I inserted a hyperlink. So now if the students weren't sure what a character trait was or they were struggling to come up with just the right one, they can click on this hyperlink and a Google Doc will open providing them with a ton of choices that they have available to them to help them get started on the lesson. Another feature that is available to make this more accessible for the students, if the student struggles with writing, you wanna take that obstacle out of the way so that they can communicate their understanding of Helen Keller and how she's changed. So when the student clicks the text box, on that text box menu, all the way at the end is the voice typing icon. The student can simply click on that. What caused Helen Keller to change was, and there you go. The student can now communicate their understanding of the topic without certain obstacles getting in the way. This can also be used for science where students can demonstrate the different steps of the scientific method or for history if they wanted to sequence events. And thanks to the Kami tools, this could be used on many different grade levels. Another example of a lesson that I camified was taking a different Meet the Teacher template and this time I turned it into a plot diagram. So this time I wanted the students to explain the exposition, rising action, turning point of a particular story. But I realized some students may not remember exactly what those terms mean. I found a YouTube video that explains the different elements of a plot diagram. I copied the URL came over to Kami's Add Media tool, selected YouTube, and pasted the URL. Hit the refresh button and there it is. And what's so great about using Kami to embed YouTube videos in your files is first of all, you had the option to change the start time. So if there was information in the beginning of the video that the students didn't need, you could have them start at the point that's most appropriate. Secondly, Kami takes out the ads and the recommended videos at the end. So this is a much safer way to share YouTube videos with your students. So now I'm going to click next 
And just like when you add a graphic or image into Kami, it sticks to your mouse. So come over to where you want the video and click to drop it onto your file. Then you can resize it, use the tools to move it where you want it, and now you have an embedded resource to make this lesson accessible to your students. I also provided a text box that showed them the start time for each of the different terms so that this way they didn't have to watch the whole video if perhaps they only needed help with falling action or resolution. So those are some examples of how you can use the resources from the Kami library. But now I'm going to show you a different way to use the Kami tools and resources to modify an existing lesson. Here's an example of a hexagonal thinking map that I use with my students, and I created four different versions using the Kami tools. Then I can assign the different versions to the different learning styles and abilities to the students in my classroom. So first let me explain to you what hexagonal thinking map is. The students take hexagons and add different vocabulary terms and then drag them next to each other to show the different connections between the terms. So here's an example for the miracle worker, for ancient Egypt, and for math. Then the students can draw arrows so that they can explain the different connections. So how I camified this resource for my students, you have two different ways to upload it to Kami. You can start in your Google Drive, right click and select annotate with Kami. Your other option is to start with Kami and then go to open from Google Drive. Then once it's open, you can use the Kami tools to modify it to create the different versions. So once this was open, I used the Kami add media tool and inserted the arrows. So now it becomes a drag and drop interactive activity. If I assign this in present mode in Google Slides, the students are not able to drag and drop. So thanks to the Kami Add Media tool, I can make this an interactive drag and drop lesson. So the students will simply add their text box, drag their arrows, and then scroll down to explain the connections. Now, some of my students might not be at that level. So the second version that I created was after I opened it in Kami, I added text boxes. So then when I assign this version to the students, the students can drag the vocabulary terms to wherever they feel are appropriate and to the connections they feel that they can best explain. The third version, before I assigned it to the students, I already added the text boxes where I thought they best fit. This will simplify the lesson and it will be much less overwhelming for the students. This will also enable the students to use the dictionary tool and the read aloud tool to make it more accessible. If the students were struggling with what some of these terms mean, they can simply highlight the term, come over to the dictionary tool, and it will define it for them. That will make it much easier for them to go ahead with the lesson and explain the connections. They can also use the read aloud tool if they're not sure what the terms are. So again, there's that embedded support to make sure that the students can explain their understanding of the concept. Then they can go ahead and drag the arrows to whichever terms they wanted to elaborate on. The fourth and final version that I created was I already brought the arrows over to the terms that I felt were most important for the students to understand and that I really wanted them to focus on. And then I already put the terms in the explanation boxes to streamline and simplify the lesson for those students. And then of course they had the option to add the other arrows if they felt comfortable with taking it to the next level. Another great feature of Kami is that it integrates with your LMS. Whether you use Schoology or Google Classroom or Canvas, you can now take these four different versions of the assignment and post it to your students. When assigning this to your students, you have three different options. The first option is to take version one and assign it to the students you feel it's most appropriate for. Take version two and assign it to those students and so on. The way you would do that, in Google Classroom, come to Create Kami Assignment, search your drive for version one, make sure you're making a copy for each student, and then select the students you feel are ready for version one and go ahead and assign it to them. Then repeat for version two, three, and four until all students have been assigned one of the versions of the lesson.
Another option, and I think this one is my favorite, is to take all four versions and assign it to all of your students. Sometimes a student may be really excited and engaged with a particular topic, and they may surprise you and be able to perform on one of the other versions you may not have assigned to them. So this gives the student to really prove what they know if there's something that they're excited about or really connecting with. Now, sometimes your higher level students might just be having a bad day. They're not feeling well, they're upset about something at home, or perhaps they were absent when you assigned the lesson. There may be a day where they just need a little extra support. So now they have that option of choosing a version that's most appropriate for them on that day. And of course, if you have one student that's always selecting the easier option for them, you could always privately chat with that student and encourage them when they're done with that one to try the next level. The fourth option is to have students collaborating. So when you assign it in Google Classroom, create your Kami assignment, select whichever version you want to use, And instead of making a copy for each student, this time you're going to choose students share one copy. Then select the students that you want to collaborate on that version and assign it. And again, thanks to those Kami collaborator icons, you can click and see what each student is writing and how each student has been involved and participating in the lesson. So not only do all of the Kami tools and resources provide you with so many options to modify this for your students, it also provides you with so many options through your LMS on how to assign this to your students. So you're really making sure that the lesson is accessible for all of your students and that all students are included so that they're engaged and involved. So I hope I gave you some good ideas on how you can use the Kami tools and resources to Camify your lessons. It's really important that you modify your lessons so that the lessons are accessible for all of your students and so that they are all included. Again, my name is Michelle Manning, and if you're interested in following me on social media, my handle is at Manning Tech Talk.